in memory of her. I don't remember the look of your face or the sound of your voice, but your love for Jesus lives in me. I can't remember what your hug felt like or whether you liked to cook. In many ways, I don't know you, and yet a part of you lives in me. It's hard to explain. I long to see your face again. Yet when I look at your picture, I sense you say I belong to you, and your memory lives on in me. Maybe in my human grief, I pretend you didn't exist, so that I don't have to have daily reminders of how much I miss you. I wish I didn't have to live with memories of stories told by others of who you are or were. I wish I knew you. You look so beautiful in that wedding dress, so young, full of life, shining for all the world to see. The fact that you are not in my life anymore reminds me that this lifetime is so temporary. And I long for a time when I can sit next to you with no distractions, and talk the years away. In not knowing you, I feel a piece of myself is missing as I stare into the heavens, looking to be whole. All I have to hold on to in my heart are stories and longings. I have a deep desire to know you, and I don't know what to do about it. Are we all people who walk around with scars of the heart, Afraid to admit our questions to God. Afraid that love will come to an end. Comforting angels are sent to me, calling to my heart to have hope that we will meet again. Embrace each other as we are embraced by a Heavenly Father. In memory of you, Mom, and your faith is a part of me that reminds me of eternal love and eternal encouragement. In memory of of her. What would your, in memory of her, wish to say this day? Would it recall memories of Thanksgiving of a mother, grandmother, Sunday school teacher, teacher, neighbor, spouse, or a friend? Was there a special woman in your life that did beautiful things for you and others whose stories need to be told? In today's text, the beautiful act of love is remembered by Jesus. And we, thousands of years later, still recall a woman whose devotion and love to Christ is not forgotten. It's hard to believe or imagine that Jesus would come into the world as the Son of God and feel like an outsider, rejected by the very people whom God had served for centuries. This is the case in Mark. As the writer reminds us of the chief priests and the teachers of the law who were sneakily, slyly, stealthily looking to arrest Jesus and kill him. Ever have that feeling that you don't know who you can trust? Or been confused, wondering where the next disgruntled person will suddenly wield their venomous words at you? You definitely don't get the impression that the chief priests and the teachers of the law were thankful for all that Jesus had done for the people. We have that English idiom that says Jesus was probably ruffling, ruffling the wrong feathers of powerful people. Verse 5 lets us know that Jesus is in Bethany. Bethany was a town where he had friends. Jesus is reclining at the table of Simon the leper, a man who probably Jesus healed of leprosy. In comes a woman. Mark doesn't even name her. But she breaks out a jar of expensive spike nard, probably from India, and anoints Jesus' head in an act of devotion and love. Some of those present are not just bewildered, but indignant. A strong word of resentment and anger. Why this waste? They knew how valuable spike nard was that it was worth a year's wages. 
something so valuable could be used to fund major mission projects or to help the poor. The woman was expressing from her heart the value of having Jesus in her life. She, Jesus saw her act of extravagant devotion from her heart and saw it as part of God's plan of extravagant love and devotion expressed in Christ's death on the cross. Beautiful acts of service done in Jesus' name do not go unnoticed. Jesus sees hearts that serve others with extravagant love and devotion in Jesus' name as if we're doing a beautiful service to him. Matthew 10, verse 32 says, Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Matthew 25, Jesus shares a parable about visiting and helping others. When he, and he says, The righteous are shocked to hear that in serving others in Jesus' name, we serve Jesus. He says, Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When do we see you as a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When do we see you sick? or in prison and go and visit you. The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Jesus' response in saying that you will always have the poor was not elevating his needs over the poor. Jesus calls us to serve the poor and helping the needy, as Matthew 25 talked about. This passage, though, reminds us of our service to others as an act of devotion to Jesus. The Westminster Confession of Faith reminds us that the Bible teaches that the chief goal of our lives should be to glorify God, yes, but also to enjoy Him forever. Do we see our daily acts of service as a way of expressing our devotion of enjoying the love of Jesus in our lives? When we serve with the same devotion and sacrificial love that Jesus demonstrated to us, then we can serve not out of duty, but costly love. In the passage I mentioned in the children's story, Jesus saw the costly service of a woman who understood the value of God's mercy and forgiveness in Jesus. Jesus said in Luke 7, Therefore I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. When we see the value and costly devotion of Jesus in our lives to cleanse us and to forgive us, we know a deeply devoted love. Jesus, who knows our hearts, saw the devotion of this woman who anointed him. That is why Jesus responded to the angry crowd, was leave her alone. She has done a beautiful thing to me. Women of St. Paul's, when your service and love for others is costly and hard and rarely gets noticed and unappreciated, remember this story. Costly acts of beautiful love done in Jesus' name are noticed by Jesus. He will remember your acts of service and your devotion. He will appreciate them and see them and you as beautiful. In memory of her stories will be told of you and your beautiful acts of love and will shine for generations. Wherever the good news and the costly love of Jesus is shared in the world. For our prayer today, I want to pray a prayer of blessing over the women of St. Paul's. I've chosen a few of the women in the Bible whose character and faith were recorded in memory of their devotion to God. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, I thank you for the beautiful acts of love that many women of St. Paul's have done in your name. Will you bless them with the strength and leadership of Deborah? 
who stepped up in leadership for you when everyone else was looking to their own interests. Will you bless these beautiful women with the courage of Rahab, who left her own people to follow you? Will you bless these women with the perseverance of Naomi, who continued to follow you after enduring the incredible hardship of losing her husband and sons? Will you bless these women with the sacrificial love that Esther displayed, who was willing to risk her life to save her people? Will you bless, bless these women with the faith of Mary, who believed in the impossible word of the angel and became the mother of the Son of God? Will you bless these women with the wisdom and ingenuity of Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Susanna, who used their financial resources to support the ministry of Jesus? Will you bless these women with the devotion and love of the woman who performed a beautiful act of love to you, Jesus, by anointing your head with the best she had to offer. Will you bless these women with the craftsmanship of Tabitha, who used her gifts to clothe the poor? Lastly, Lord Jesus, will you bless these women with the servant heart of Lydia, who welcomed and opened her home to those who shared the love of Christ. May you, Lord Jesus, bless the women of St. Paul's <clears throat> so that beautiful acts of love will be told about them in the name of Jesus for generations to come. Amen.